Welcome back. Earlier in the program, we had a report about how the U.S. media reported the Iraq war in 2003 as the United States intensifies airstrikes on Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. How are U.S. journalists reporting on that latest conflict? Well, to discuss this, we have Jane Hall, a journalism professor and media commentator. She's right here with me in the studio. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Uh, Ms. Hall, uh, let me talk about the Iraq war in 2003 for just a moment. Mm -hmm. That was when we had the concept of the embedded journalist, when the Pentagon decided where journalists would go, which unit they would travel with, etc. If we look at that, did U.S. media effectively outsource coverage of the war to the Pentagon PR machine? Well, in some ways, yes. I mean, I think the, the walk-up, as it was called, to the war was, was the greater failing, because it is true that embedded journalists uh, were under the control of the Pentagon, but at the same time, there's a, there was a lot of danger from being not embedded. So, so you, could, you could make the argument that it was, it was valuable. The Pentagon had obviously looked at the Vietnam War and decided that the media had helped turn public opinion against it. So that was part of what they were thinking. But in the wars that we have today, it is very hard for journalists to be operating independently, as we've seen. So my real criticism, though, is more of the walk-up to the war. I was on Fox News the night we, we, the United States, went to war. And it was like a Super Bowl countdown. There was tremendous pressure on the networks post 9-11 not to report that there were people in the uh, intelligence community who were questioning uh, whether we really needed to go to war, whether there were weapons of mass destruction. So was the media in some sense actually led by the nose into this war without asking those tough questions? Well, I think, I think that's probably true. You know, uh, Dick Cheney in 2002 said there was no question that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. They also very cleverly framed it by saying, you're either with us or against us. Oh, exactly. And, you know, I was on Fox at that time, and people were wearing flag pins after 9-11. People were writing in and saying, you know, if you questioned, you were not patriotic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was that strain post 9-11 that, that made it very difficult. CNN at, at one point had shown uh, civilian casualties and then felt that they had to say this was in reaction to 9-11 that we were doing this. That was sort of the atmosphere that was going on at the time. Well, let's look at the current war. New war has been declared against Islamic State. Uh, you talked about the walk-up to the previous war. What about the walk-up to this war? Have there been tough questions asked now? Well, I think you have an odd reversal. You have Fox News uh, in the clip that you showed saying that Obama has not done enough and we should be going after these terrorists. I mean, the problem is that we aren't even sure whom we're going after. And I think the American people are war weary. And that has been reflected. You have, uh, when, when President Obama went on the air, people on Fox News who tend to have a more Republican point of view, Sean Hannity et al., were saying it's about time. He hasn't done enough. Whereas if you looked at at MSNBC, Rachel Maddow that night, she's very knowledgeable about this subject. And she was saying, boy, I don't know. You know, we've been down this road before. Who are our allies? We didn't, we didn't really in, get engaged with arming the Syrians now. Who are we going to be arming? There was much more of criticism from the liberal MSNBC than from Fox. Except now I think public opinion is, is coming around to supporting Obama. That's what you see in the polls. That's what Congress is going to reflect. You know, James Russin, who is a New York Times reporter and is currently facing imprisonment because yes. he won't divulge uh, his sources, he said that the Obama administration is, and I'm quoting here, the greatest enemy of press freedom in a generation. Do you agree? There are a lot of journalists who feel that way. Uh, you know, I don't know if I would say it's the greatest enemy. I I've reported on the NSA, the National Security agency stories on surveillance that Edward Snowden leaked and then that the, the Guardian went with and then that the Washington Post won a Pulitzer for. If you talk to journalists now, they say that the Obama administration and the Department of Justice has gone after leaks. I think, I think the figure is something like three times as many as any other previous administration. So while people thought this was a liberal democratic administration, the reality is their track record about about investigating leaks under the Espionage Act of 1917 is not that good. So it's a paradox uh, for 
for them. Roy, what you're telling us also tells us something else. I mean, if you look at these big stories, mm -hmm. these big investigations that have been carried out, they've been carried out by online news organizations. I mean, we had WikiLeaks. We had Glenn Greenwald, right. uh, who's reporting for the online edition of the British newspaper, The Guardian, now has uh, his own uh, online uh, newspaper called The Intercept. Uh, it's not the mainstream media, not the big names that we often think about. Well, you know, that's, that's true, except I think that, that Barton Gelman and The Washington Post popularized it, put it in the mainstream media. The, being all over the front page of The Washington Post and having massive surveillance of citizens and the fact that the Internet companies cooperated with this, however reluctantly, I think that still matters greatly. Um, they did a lot of really good reporting, too. But it is true that The Guardian and other publications were, the, you know, were talking to Edward Snowden, and he went to both publications, which I think is very interesting. Okay, we just have about 40 seconds left. Should regulatory bodies like the FCC be doing their job, making sure there is diversity in the media in the United States, rather than facilitating huge corporations from just taking over one news organization after another and consolidating the media? Yes, absolutely. They had a laissez-faire attitude. They have never, their government regulation is, is out the window. They're about to approve, you know, even bigger. So the public should, in my opinion, be talking about that because there's not going to be a diversity of voices if you have larger and larger corporations gobbling up stations, networks, ownership of production. It's, it's a great un, unknown story. Jane Holt, going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us.